So I lost the 50 50 on Arlequino's banner to. Why? <laughs> no! Yeah, I know. It was to be expected. After all, I only had enough for one 5 star, and I had won my last 50 50 on Shenyun. Everything was dependent on luck. So today I'll be farming all of the new region to hopefully get Arlequino. I'm hoping that there's enough Prima Gems for me to find. I'm sitting at around 10 pities, so I'll need 80 Fates just to be on the safe side, but realistically I'll just need 65. Hopefully. Okay, so here's the game plan. First up is the world quest. You already know that I gotta unlock everything. And then I'll do Arlequino's story quest. Along the way, I'll farm as much as I can, and once I finish that up, I'll max out the Fountain of the Scene and the Statue of the Seven. Seems simple enough, right? I'm not sure how many fates I'll get out of this, but I'm sure that it will at least get me much closer to summoning Arlequino. I think many of us have already gone through the world quest by this point, but I'll keep this brief for those of you who haven't. I don't know how Hoyo keeps doing it, but they keep outdoing themselves like god damn. This was great, it was peak, like not a single word was wasted, etc. Also, I know that none of us have a goddamn original thought because I know that y'all thought that this guy looked like Dr. Ratio. It was literally my first thought, and I don't even play Honkai Star Rail like that. I literally just log in to get the free login pulls each month, and that is it. But to get back to the topic on hand, the quest was amazing. I loved following Oss around and even petting him, like I made sure he got pets at every opportunity. He looks so goofy traveling underwater in the cutest way possible. So why, Hoyo? Why could it like... Ah! So to put respect on Oss's name, I def changed my profile picture to his. And aren't all of the new ones so, so, so cute? Like, I originally changed it to Saruj, but I just had to change it to Oss's after the end of the world quest. So I said that I was going to do most of the exploration while also doing the world quest, but I felt like I needed to focus on just one. It was taking way too long, and it felt like I couldn't really enjoy one or the other. I love exploring this area, and I'm probably in the majority when I say that it felt really small. I did genuinely love how compact everything felt, it wasn't overwhelming at all. But for the purposes of this video, it absolutely sucked. I'd like to imagine that Hoyo kept the rewards fairly similar to other regional expansions, but damn, it really only took me like a weekend to get through everything and that's with me taking my time. I don't know, maybe in the past I've just been way too busy compared to now where I'm just in my unemployed friend era. Putting that aside, Hoyo does really keep outdoing themselves. I love the bookshelves, they were such a cool touch and I hope we see them in the future or at least something similar. They gave me mad Hex and Circle vibes. The note bubbles were also really cool. I'll be honest, I'm your average dumbass, so it obviously took me like 15 tries to even get the hang of it. Bruh. But it was so much fun. All the challenges to get the music tracks were incredible. Also, maybe I'm just reading too much into it, but after we fought the wave of fish ups and read the stone tablet in that one cave, are they... talking about a descender? You already know I'm waiting for a lore drop from Ashikai or Minslif, so like, yeah. Hoyo really out here dropping casual deep lore like that. I see you. I see you. So at this point, I'm thinking, surely I have enough Primo gems by now. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, after all of this hours farming and doing quests, I must have gotten myself a decent bounty, right? Would you believe me when I tell you that I got a whopping five pulls? Worth of Prima Gems. Oh god, was this a reality check? You know, being at 10 pity does make me feel slightly better, but I'm still so far away from my end goal. I just end up going for it and... Yeah. C70 billion Shangling. And yes, there was no surprise Arlequino. At least with getting C10 billion Shangling, I was able to get another fate, which resulted in more fodder. Yeah. But you know what else gives out more fates? 
the hydroalkali and hydrosigils. Both offering systems are newly maxed out, so I go ahead and farm what's left of the oculi. Later on, I'll go ahead and do the same for sigils. My search went pretty smoothly except for this one. This one was a pain. I don't know why I couldn't find it. Like, I know, I know. We agreed that I'm a dumbass earlier, but I genuinely kept getting escorted by Paimon because I thought it was higher up or in some cave or something. I would have never thought that there was like this little alleyway where it was, which really irritated me because there was a time trial that took you directly there too. But I didn't do it until after. I actually didn't explore anything like I said I would. It was nearing the end of the night and I decided that I wanted to sleep instead, so I left it for another day. I didn't even look at how many fates or primos I got, not that it even mattered since, spoiler, it was essentially negligible. It's becoming frightening clear that our like, you know, may not come home at all. But that was tomorrow's problem. The next day I went ahead and did Arlequino's world quest. And please let me know that my thought on this kid was not original either. Lenny really glossed over the fact that this kid casually hurt animals. Like, yeah, I don't know who wouldn't think that this was an issue. The abandonment can be sympathetic, I get it, yeah, like sex for the kid. But the rest, I mean, it works for the house of the heart. But for normal people, like, nah, Lenny, nah. That's like, no. But story quest aside, I like the unique direction that they took with this quest. Usually we spend the entire quest alongside the character, but I don't think you know would come and go as the story progressed, and in my opinion, that really matches her characterization. She's strong-willed and abides by her own rules, and how the story played out definitely proves that. But we also see the sweet side that she knows she can't always abide by. Also, Traveler Jump Scare. I'll admit that I was kind of zoning out towards the end of the quest until I heard Ether's voice like, God damn what? That got me fully invested until the end and I'm glad it did. After the beautiful end to Artakino's world quest, world quest, I was 100% convinced that I wanted to pull for her. I was having my doubts and I was losing hope, but now I was sure. So it was time to get back to farming. At this point, I was sitting close to completion of the Sea of Bygone Eras and the tiny island above it. It wasn't long before I reached 100%, but by that point I had only combed through the upper island and the top half of the sea. I still had the rest of the sea to go through, which made me realize just how much I still needed to do in some of the other regions. Like I'm close to 100% in most of Sumeru, but god is there probably still a ton to get through. Yeah. But I don't know. In this case I've never really felt overwhelmed by the underwater exploration. I think because traveling is generally smooth in this area, almost like you're flying, you don't have to worry about climbing or losing stamina and dying after. I hope we get something similar that allows for fluid movement in that land. Like what about mounts? All I'm saying is that people and dragons supposedly live alongside one another over there so it would be kinda cool to have like a dragon mount or something. Please? Hoyo? Also, I am grateful that Hoyo added the new location feature to the treasure compass. It helped a lot. It's definitely something that will see a lot of use as I comb through the rest of Tebat before 5.0 drops. I went back into the game for one final time before I was ready to summon, mainly to snap pictures of the new region for the YouTube thumbnail, and I realized that I actually had a few more sources for primos. I had achievements yet to be claimed. And looking at those achievements, I saw that I hadn't maxed out the music box either, so I went ahead and did that. I did the trial, but I somehow forgot to claim the actual disc. And then there was the Fountain of the Scene. I had mentioned earlier I was going to max it out, but now I had more than enough sigils, so there were two intertwined fates waiting for me. My hopes were at an all-time high. Surely I was so much closer. After all of that hard work, surely I would be rewarded, right? And as I clicked on the wish page and it loaded up, my heart sank as I was hit by reality yet again. I had only managed to get 10 more intertwined fates. Even after all of those extra hours of farming, I only got a measly 10 more fates. We we're, we're literally only at 10. Okay. Um, and we are at... 16 pity so 
yeah even if we were to do the event and everything like that we would not have enough to get our like you know that is very unfortunate now across countless chests puzzles steelies time trials etc i was able to get a total of 18 intertwined fates which isn't shabby at all but it was finally clear i had to throw in the towel i would not be getting out of the kino it really do be like that it's become clear that i've reached a breaking point even with my resinless behavior it will only get me so far these days i've reached a point where i'm almost out of primo gem sources and now i'll have to wait for any new updates for any substantial game to my ftp wallet am i sad about Arlequino? yeah i'm a bit disappointed but it's not the end of the world and I'm not entirely out of primos just yet, and I can still farm the rest of Tevat, but at this point my biggest constraint is time. I probably wouldn't be able to put a dent in the two weeks left before she leaves. What do you think? Should I continue farming to get out of the kino, or should I wait for someone else? Chlorand does look sick AF. Let me know your thoughts, and I will see you in the next one.